Will! Yes? You have to come back with me! Where? Back to the future! Wh How? Your Apple Watch has a new time travel app! Set your coordinates! To... to... when? Just hit whatever! It's morphing time! What the f***? Wait, why are we morphing? I don't know! Why am I the pink one? Hit the button! Form, arms, and body! And I'll form the head! Of what? Hit the button! Two thousand sixteen? What happened? Donald Trump became president. Should we even roll the credits? Oh, you Flex. Time travel Tuesday. What's up, guys? Thanks for watching another episode of Shore You Flex. My name is Mirsky. This is my boy Will. This is actually our third episode of. Time Travel Tuesday. And this movie we're about to go over is actually the reason we created Time Travel Tuesday. You guessed it, we're gonna go over Back, Back to, to the Future. Hey Will. Yes? It's about that time. What it's time is it? It's October 21st, 2015. Guess who's coming through that time rip? Marty McFly? Oh my god! I can't wait! Oh no, didn't happen. But it is the 30th anniversary of Back to the Future. So we're actually going to go over Back to the Future 1 and 2. We're going to be scoring both of them at the same time according to our five categories. Back to the Future for me was the quintessential um, 80s uh, adventure movie, basically. Um, it changed the way we saw time travel uh, going forward, and it changed the way uh, Hollywood perceived time travel going forward. Who knew that a uh, car that never really saw the light of day in the U.S. <laughs> would, be, would become the, uh, the the most awesome time travel machine? And believe it or not, the uh, the in the production notes, uh, Marty was supposed to time travel in a refrigerator, but they actually uh, scrapped that idea because they didn't want kids crawling into refrigerators trying to go back in time. I would have. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did you think of Back to the Future? Um, Back to the Future for me is a, it's a movie where I actually had the box set of DVDs, mm -hmm. which in this day and age, no one really collects DVDs anymore. Mm -hmm. I have them. I don't necessarily use them because I don't have a DVD player, except, well, I kind of do, but I don't really use that function on my, play, on my PlayStation. But um, anytime this movie's on, I can't not watch it. I have to be there. I don't care what I'm doing. I'm going to be watching Back to the Future. Um as a kid, seeing that made my imagination expand threefold. Right. And uh, I've always hoped I could time travel just to see what Marty McFly saw back in the day. But yeah, it never happened. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it grew, that the theory grew in each one of our minds as kids. Like, what if we could time travel and change stuff so that our future or our present could be, could be better than what it is? But, yeah. you know... Never came to fruition yet, or maybe they're working on it, but... I think the world would be in complete shambles if time travel ever came to be. <laughs> well, like you said, I mean, every anytime that it's on TV, we, you know, you always leave it on, you always want to watch it. So, let's go into our five categories. Watchability for Back to the Future 1 and 2. Yep. Well, I'm going to have you lead that off. Um, watchability for, for me, uh, you know... I can remember even being a youngster watching this movie. This movie technically came out before I was born, but you know when this movie was so popular throughout the years that it's still kids now still know what it is. So when I was watching it as a kid, the initial original Back to the Future, um, I can remember sitting there watching it with my mom, and my dad sitting there and watching the movie and uh, being as excited as a I guess a four or five year old can be watching a movie at that time, not really understanding what's going on, but seeing. Um, you know, in the first one, when they go all the way back in the past, it's cool seeing a world that you don't really understand anymore or you don't even get a chance to yeah. uh, um, mm -hmm. be a part of. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, one and two combined, when he goes into the future and sees that Biff is now taking over the world, basically, and his dad is no longer around and this yeah. and that. Yeah. Um, 
and all the all the stuff that actually has come true now mm-hmm. uh, in modern day with you know technology, where it's the 3D stuff. Um, hopefully, a self lacing sneaker very soon, and then you have your also your uh, hoverboard is just starting to happen now, kind yeah. of in a way. Yeah. Um, all because of, you know what? All that is all because of the movies that came out. It's just. People never thought that of a skateboard that could fly, and yeah. everyone's trying hard to to, to make, make it happen. that happen. Yeah, the movies. I mean, like movies like these kind of set the 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 bar of what hopefully we can do. Mm-hmm. You know, like Minority Report did the same thing with the you know the, the touching and and of uh, videos and whatnot, manipulating your fingers, expanding mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so watchability. Uh, five out of five. Yeah, I definitely give it a five out of five. Only it's because it's. It's one of the best trilogies that that may, may maybe have come out ever. Um, Back to the Future, basically, again, it just sets the bar for a lot of different things. It transcended a lot of pop culture too, mm-hmm. as far as um, the uh, the style that uh, Marty portrayed in Back to the Future One, and when they actually go into the future future for uh, Back to the Future Two, yeah. it set the precedent for a lot of things that we see today. So. You cannot give watchability less than a five, which uh, and to piggyback over of that, let's go to our next category. Fun factor. Definitely a lot of fun in all three movies, uh, three included. But mm-hmm. again, we're focusing on one and two. How could you not have fun <coughs> thinking of time traveling? You can't. You have to have anytime you have the possibility of what you could do if you could time travel. Mm-hmm. Limitless fun. <laughs> a limitless one. <laughs> Can you imagine if you had a DeLorean uh, that had that time travel property and just, you know, you were just going back and forth into uh, what, you know, what the future might hold and, you know, adhering to the uh, morale of the movie or at least a part two is like not um, altering things too much so that it will ruin uh, the, the butterfly experience. effect. Don't even mention that movie. <laughs> the first one wasn't bad. <laughs> anyway, anyway, <laughs> um, no, the yeah, the fun factor of this movie is, um, you know, you, 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 the point of watching these movies is so you wonder. It's so you can wonder if you were in Mario McFly's shoe, what would you do? Mm-hmm. You would probably get the sports almanac. You would probably try to make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. You would probably mess up along the way and cause devastating consequences afterwards. Right. So, um, and I would definitely, definitely have a hoverboard. And a self drying jacket. <laughs> and definitely not try to get hit on by your mom. That yeah, I that is such a weird thing to witness. And Probably the, the one of the creeper premises of the movie, but it yeah, worked. It worked. <laughs> it, worked. It, was, it, it was a driving plot point too of the movie. Yeah. I mean it was you know he had to get his parents back together in part one so that he could be born. Uh, you know what does bother me a little bit of this movie? It's not really a critique I guess it is a critique, but mm-hmm. It bothers me that, you know, they see their son as, you know, Calvin Klein, <laughs> and, you know, in the past. And when, the, you know, Mario McFly becomes a teenager in real time, how do you not tell, you can't tell the difference between the two? I mean, I mean, the mean the, what I mean by that is that there is no difference. It's the same effing person. So this movie is the first of its kind. Will it will never be really thought about that until now? A complete <laughs> mind effort for me. Like, wait a second, did our son inception us back in the day? Wow. <laughs> uh, but no, uh, bring it all back. Fun factor: five out of five. Five out of five for me too. Yeah. All right, moving on. Tone again. The tone of the movie. It's just fun, and uh, there are some serious points at at times because he he needs to get back home for things to be set. Right, but again, tone for me, I'm just going to say right out the bat, it's 5 out of 5. Uh, tone for me, it's, again, because it does set a very good uh, a pace for the entire film where he does have to travel back in time, he has to fix problems, and, and think of things on the fly. Um, McFly. Mick, I'm the McFly. Um, Sorry. <laughs> I learned a new word the other day that I can't really say it on camera. It's actually really funny. What? Mick asshole. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good word, though. Anyway, um, tone-wise, I'll, I'll give it a four out of five. Um, okay. Yeah, four out of five for that one. Now we get to pace and editing. Well, you know, for this series being the uh, 
kind of the first of its kind. You didn't really know what to expect as far as, oh, well, at least for part two, it was like, how are they, where were they going to go, what the future was going to be like. Yeah. And it's, again, Back to the Future, at least Back to the Future 2, set the expectation of what our future was going to be like. And now that we are in 2015, a lot of us are pretty much uh, let down. Again, no flying cars, <laughs> no actual hoverboards, no self-lacing sneakers. Almost. None of this stuff that, you know, we got a lot of cool stuff from, you know, now from, from back then. But, you know, a lot of the cooler stuff that was in the movie never came to fruition or hasn't come to fruition yet. Yeah. Um, but as far as the, uh, the editing of those special effects into Back to the Future 2, I thought it was awesome. Yeah. Uh, pace and editing, I thought it was, uh, again, it was pretty damn good. Um <laughs> I like that there was a lot of nuggets in those films that yeah. you know you don't really notice it back then, but now that we've had so many years just to, to, to dissect it, over, it yeah, we've watched it over a hundred times. <laughs> you know, there's like even like parts where he where he comes back from I believe the past. Uh, no, I'm sorry, he comes back. Yeah, he comes back from the past, and it's no longer Twin Pines Mall anymore. Yeah, it's it, Lone Pine. Exactly, because yeah. he drove through it when he first got back into the past and got rid of the Twin Pine. Right. Um, but stuff like that, I, I can res- I can appreciate those little nuggets that they sprinkled in all those years ago that we now finally get to really understand and treasure. Yeah. Um, so pacing, editing, uh, I guess I'll give five out of five. Yeah, five out of five for me too. Okay, so that brings us to <laughs> acting, acting. So uh, at least for me, Back to the Future one, you it's totally believable uh, when it first starts off that those Marty's parents were old. And then when he gets back to the uh, past in the 50s, that uh, they were young. The, the acting is superb throughout this movie. It's not a little bit overacted, mm-hmm. but it's just that it, it, it works for this type of movie. Okay. Um, I'm going to go a little bit different from me on acting because uh, Christopher Lloyd played a, a... He did great as Doc Brown because he was such an eccentric person um, mm-hmm. and he was off the wall, back crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, I loved how he, he, he portrayed Dr. Emmett Brown. Mm-hmm. Um when I now that I watch the movies back over and over again, Michael J. Fox, Michael J. Fox's performance as Martin McFly. Some parts are eh, 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 not that great. Mm. You know when he's like Doc, Doc, and he just <laughs> sometimes those are classic. That's they are. Classic. It's just that some of them. It's just a how do you think Eric Stoltz would have handled that? Well, there's a reason that he got booted. So, it's I'm not saying Michael J. Fox did a bad job, but mm. just you know we're talking about acting, so. It wasn't the best acting in the world back then. He was still kind of new, you know. So, um, I do think that Crispin Glover did a good job as uh, George McFly, mm-hmm. being that shy guy and kind of awkward and kind of creepy in a way, yeah. being in a tree and with binoculars. I got a trivia question for you. Did you know that Crispin Glover wasn't in part two? They used the double. Wait, really? Yeah. Even when the- they, yeah, when when they're in the future and they show uh, Crispin Glover's character, which is. Uh, Senior McFly, George McFly. Yeah, yeah. Um, when he's upside down, that's not Crispin Glover, man. That's somebody else. Oh. Yeah. That's what I know. Yeah, oh. Yeah, 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 no. Huh. Uh, knowing is half the battle. I lost this battle already, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> um, Leah Thompson did a great job as uh, as Martin McFly's mom, and especially you know when the 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 past version of uh, of Lorraine was really good, um, very convincing. So yeah. the, the uh, they really portrayed the uh, the fifties w- the way that I thought the fifties would have been. So that's I wish I could. I mean, there's there's a time I could ever travel back to or to kind of witness from the back seat. Mm-hmm. Um, it would be probably the fifties, just because it seemed like a very cool time to be in. You know, yeah. that's when like diners and roller skates and milkshakes and all this other stuff. The way they dressed, it was, was a very innocent time. Yes. To, to go yeah. to back because yeah. by the end of the fifties, you had the sixties when all the uh, you know Drugs. kind of revolution was happening. Yeah. I'll call it the revolution was happening uh, yeah. to and, and eventually morphing into a society that we have now. But the fifties looked like it would have been a nice, peaceful so time innocent. People are hardworking. Yeah. TV was just uh, created mm-hmm. that the, the the wardrobes the lifestyle was so different so much chiller back then yeah um, so I would have loved to be back in the 50s if I could ever time travel it would go to the 50s mm-hmm. um, but yeah for acting I would probably give it um, just because you know it wasn't meant to be a uh, an award-winning acting kind of movie, mm-hmm. I can't give it a perfect score. I'll give it a 4 out of 5. I mean, I'm going to disagree. I'll give it a 5 out of 5 because all the acting in the movie pretty much 
served its purpose and it played off uh, all the characters played off each other well yeah and um, for it to be such a, a classic that it is that we uh, come back to now it, it, the acting had to have been on point so I'm gonna go five out of five sounds good to me cool okay. so to wrap up our time travel Tuesday review on back to the future and back to the future part two we're gonna go through our five short you flicks categories yes, watchability I gave it a five out of five we'll give it a five out of five. And then for Fun Factor, I gave it a 5 out of 5, we'll give it a... 5 out of 5. And for Tone, I gave it a 5 out of 5, we'll give it a... 4 out of 5. And for Pace and Editing, I also gave it a 5 out of 5. 5 out of 5. Awesome nuggets. <laughs> and then for Acting, I gave it a 5 out of 5, we'll give it a... 4 out of 5. Which brings our total score for Back to the Future to be... A... a. Thanks for watching this episode of Show You Flicks. My name is Mariski, this is my boy, Will... Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment. We'd love to hear what you think. Also, here's a question for you. Mm. If there is any decade you could travel back to within the 1900s, which one would it be? Let us know below. See you soon. Adios. Peace. Adios!